Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about the Leatherman Bond. This is a budget multi-tool with a variety of features, 14 different features. We'll go over some specifications and look at the tool here. The weight's going to be 6.21 ounces or 176 grams. Closed length is going to be about 4 inches or 10 centimeters. Open length is going to be about 6.5 inches or 15.87 centimeters. The primary 420 HC blade is going to be about 2.9 inches or 7.36 centimeters. Total width is going to be about 1.21 inches or 3 centimeters. And finally, the overall thickness is 0.56 inches or 1.4 centimeters. Here we can see the Leatherman Bond on the table with the installed pocket clip. That's about $9 on the main website. The weight's coming out to about 5.9 ounces on the scale here. All right, so here's what the outside of the Leatherman Bond looks like. We have the installed ex extra accessory pocket clip on here. It's about $9 on the website. We have the ruler and centimeter markings on the outside of the tool. There's no outside accessible tools on this particular model, but we can clearly see the centimeters and inches markings, which is a nice feature of the Bond for its price and price point, which is around... 45 to about $60 or so, depending on if you find it on sale. And this is the bottom of it, and we have the top. And let's open it up and look at the plier head first, as that's our first primary tool area of the tool. We have our needle nose pliers at the tip here. The teeth are kind of coarse, and then we have our standard plier head here in the center. And then we have our non-replaceable wire cutters, the soft and hard wire cutters here. And in some cases, uh, this type of wire cutter might be more preferable than the more premium type ones, which are the 154 replaceable CM or 154 CM replaceable wire cutters. In other words, those wire cutters can and do often break more often than say these, but they are replaceable. So there's pros and cons to this type of head. Basically is what I'm getting at on the Leatherman Bond versus say a Leatherman Wave Generation 3 etc etc now all the tools are inside the scales here and you have to open up the tool to access it which is kind of a bummer so there's no access outside of accessible accessible tools but that's kind of a common thing with more budgeted leatherman multi tools out there now this tool is designed to be the replacement probably for the rev and or maybe the I don't want to say necessarily the sidekick or the wing wing as they include some extra tools on them that you don't have on here like the saw and or the scissors but this harkens back to an older type of tool which is called the leatherman pst and also the other model that's similar to that which is the side clip and we don't have those examples here today we'll get to another video another day with that but i'm currently borrowing this model from my brother who uses it a lot and loves it uh, I come from a family of Leatherman multi-tool aficionados. So I have the fortunate ability of having this tool on for today. Let's go over the tool set on this side here. We have our main blade and we have these slip joints here, which are really strong retention. They're not, they're not, it's not a locking tool, but it has such a great retention that takes a lot of pressure to kind of break that in. And most of the time you'll hear snap come into place with that tension on that spring so it's really really a nice system that they have for a budgeted tool and this blade is nice and thick it's got a nice edge to it and it's the 420 hc stainless steel blade here uh, we'll close that up and we'll go ahead and get our combo tool out here now this is a popular one that's on a lot of different leather models that we've seen this is our bottle cap lifter our can opener and our wire stripper all in one here you can see that v-notch wire stripper there on this part of the tool and moving along <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is not exactly working too well today moving along we do have our 3d phillips head screwdriver now this 3D Phillips head screwdriver is an amazing piece of tool on a tool of this budget or this cost. This is a thick Phillips head screw screwdriver and I believe this kind of implementation can work with the expansion tool that you would normally find for the Super Tool 300 and the rebar, which is a fantastic expansion for this kind of tool. This would slot into it and then you can use quarter inch bits 
uh, there's an extra piece that goes on here. So basically what I'm saying is this is a good feature for the Leatherman Bond, and I think that's a great thing that they put this in here, and it's really, really beefy, and it's a 3D Phillips screwdriver, which is what I like a lot with multi-tools. I don't like the 2D ones, which you find on the Wave and the Surge, for example. And that is it for this side. Moving along on this side with the with the pocket clip installed, we have a couple other tools here. We have the file, which is a coarse grain type of file, and we also have our loop here. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's our pocket loop for attaching a lanyard, a lanyard hole, whatever you want to call it. We have a cross hatch section of the file here, and then we have a third portion on the bottom with the teeth here of the file, probably for metal sawing. And we also have a single hatch section of the file as well on the other side. And it's got a nice decent length to it. So it's actually kind of practical to have it with this kind of like, kind of reminds me of the rebar type of file. A kind of a negative, and I guess it's more of a price point feature, that this does not have a diamond coated side of a file, which is a little bit more useful for my needs in particular. Moving along, we do have a pair of slotted screwdrivers here and we have a thick one kind of like the one you would find on a wave generation two or generation three this is a slotted screwdriver so it is a pretty beefy one you might be able to use this for light duty prying although i wouldn't put too much pressure on it and then right next to it, we have a smaller but longer slotted screwdriver which is a little bit a little bit taller, which is nice for that extra reach, and it might just fit into places that the wider one might not. And finally, the last tool in this section here is going to be the awl, which is quite useful for a lot of different things if you're into making holes, and it has the soling eyelet here. And once again, these all have a slip joint kind of locking procedure and it's not technically locked but you can hear that click and it's got such a resistance to it that it takes a good amount of force to actually break that down so this has got one of the best feeling slip lock joints that i've noticed in any kind of leatherman tool or any tool for that matter in my limited experience and take that with a grain of salt but that's kind of a nice to, to have that in a price point set like this leatherman bond here and that's all the tools we have in the tool itself. Some thoughts and comparisons. And once again, I don't have the side clip here right now to show as a comparison, but that would be the most direct comparison I would make to the Leatherman Bond. The Bond's kind of like the, I would say, the more updated version of that, if you will, but with obviously different features in some cases. The Bond is a great tool set. They did a good job. It's lightweight. It's pocketable more so than, say, the Wave second generation or the third generation kind of tool. And it offers, I, I believe, a little bit more useful tools than, say, the Leatherman Rev, which is really, I, I believe and feel that this is kind of like replacing. And also the other type of lineups like the Sidekick or the Wingman. And I believe there was another tool that came out not too long ago, it's like a Costco special. It's within that kind of rev lineup. I can't think of the name right now, but the point is the Leatherman Bond here is it's kind of like taking over that niche. It's a little bit longer than some of those tools, and, but it's not as wide. So it kind of harkens back to the old PST kind of format. The best way I can describe the physical form factor is like, this is kind of like a watered down rebar in some cases with a pocket clip option. And that's not to say it's a bad tool at all. It's a great tool. In fact, it's probably one of the better tools I'd recommend for anybody who's getting into multi-tools, especially Leatherman multi-tools. I come from a family of Leatherman aficionados, so they have a lot of different models for me to choose and look at, luckily. And most of my tools have come from my family, gifted to me, fortunately. But that aside, the Bond is a great first starter tool if some if you think someone might get into multi-tools or if you're looking for a gift for someone who's coming of age or someone who's just curious about it or prepping or adc or whatever this would be a fantastic first tool to get them to get them into the mindset of multi-tools i feel because it has a lot of nice features on it it has a good plier head on it it has the a nice 
straight blade that has a very strong slip joint resistive point, a capturing point, so that it doesn't fold back. Of course, none of the tools lock on it, technically speaking, but it it's such a good tool for its price, in my opinion, and those features make it a good tool, and that's why I would recommend it. And I do like having ruler measurements on my multi-tools, personally. And that's all I have to say about the Leatherman Bond. Tell me what you guys think about it, if you would get it, if you would recommend it or not. And once again, thanks for watching and enjoy your day.